Boris Johnson, 55 years old, in the intensive care unit of a London hospital of St. Thomas Hospital, one day after being admitted to the hospital for persistent, uh, persistent symptoms of coronavirus. And then just um, about a couple of hours ago, the Downing Street, 10 Downing Street, the official residence of the Prime Minister, put out a statement in which they have said that he is now being moved into the ICU. The BBC is saying that he is not on a ventilator, that he is conscious, but he is in the intensive care unit of that London hospital in case he is not able to breathe on his own and that he has to be put on a ventilator. So this is the first um, major world leader that we know of uh, that has had a situation like this where he is struggling. He is in a very obviously precarious uh, health situation uh, right now. Um, you know, people have beaten this, but uh, once you are moved into the intensive care unit, the concern around the situation obviously um, becomes a little bit more critical. And 10 Downing Street has described the conditions as worsening in uh, this afternoon. So the 55-year-old Prime Minister of Britain in the intensive care unit of, uh, a, a, London, of a London hospital. The CBC's Hannah Thibodeau is also following this story for us, uh, and she she has uh, more on that. Hannah. Hi, Andrew. I'm, I know you were looking for me right beside yes. you, but for a safe distance, I'm on the other side of the newsroom. Uh, let me just help you pick up what's happening here right now. Just learning that UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has now been admitted to the ICU in the London hospital. He went there with coronavirus-like symptoms yesterday, but his... Uh, he has worsened, uh, and in that case, they have now put him in the ICU unit. We're still trying to find out at this time, Andrew, whether he is on a ventilator or will be put on a ventilator or not. They do say that he was conscious when he was put in that situation. And then, of course, as you were saying, Andrew, this is the first world leader to be put in ICU because of this terrible virus. Now, one of the things that's happening because of course they still have to run the country. Uh the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, who is the first Secretary of State, was deputized so that they can use him whenever necessary to do uh, government work, to push things through if things are needed, and that is in case of a worst case scenario. This happened though yesterday when the Prime Minister did go into hospital because of situations that will clearly arise. We've seen lots of things here in Canada where the Prime Minister is necessary and there is that list of protocol when it comes to, in fact, uh, if a prime minister mm -hmm. is to get sick, there is that list. And here in Canada, the next in line would be Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland. So this is the case in London as well. And that's interesting that you point that out, Hannah, because, of course, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau tested positive for COVID-19. And, um, you know, there, that list had not been updated in no. a while, right? It had not been updated since the election. Then all of a sudden, I think there was a sense that maybe you need to update that list. Yeah, absolutely, because yes, of course, it is the deputy prime minister after that, but it's then after that the longest serving member of parliament, uh, liberal member of parliament and cabinet minister at that point. So it was the agriculture minister, Lawrence McCauley, who fell after the uh, foreign affairs minister. But then coming back to what's happening in the UK right now, they have deputized their Foreign Secretary Dominic Rabb, who is also the first Secretary of State, so he has been deputized. Um, so the Prime Minister, British Prime Minister, has only been in the hospital for, I think you were saying, less than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I think it was around 7 p.m. Eastern yesterday that he did go into the hospital with COVID-19 uh, conditions. He had had headaches, but clearly that situation has gotten worse and they have put him in the intensive care unit. Of course, we do have reporters on this trying to find out what that exactly means. Will he be put on a ventilator? Because that's a serious situation as well. So we're trying to get all those answers from our London Bureau. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to figure out, uh, Hannah, exactly um, what the situation is. It, it is clear that if the medical team has told him uh, that he needs to go into the ICU in anticipation, uh, and in fact, Hannah, I'll get back to you in a moment, but uh, sure. for more, we've reached Sky News reporter Aubrey Allegretti. So, Aubrey, what have you learned about the British Prime Minister's condition? Good evening. Obviously, it's been a massive bombshell 
announcement here from Downing Street in London. It was an email sent off to all of the political journalists here, just suddenly announcing that 24 hours after Boris Johnson first went into hospital, that he's been taken to the intensive care unit. It has to be said he's gone straight from Downing Street to the hospital that's closest. Uh, it treats all the sort of politicians in, in the local area, and it's, uh, yeah, just across the bridge, right down from Downing Street. So it's not a, a very long journey. He's being treated there by NHS staff, and we only had this news, obviously, in the last sort of hour or so. So it's been very fast-moving, and it invites a lot of questions. And what are some of those questions that you have in terms of his condition right now? Well, I suppose the first question is, is he going to be put on a ventilator or not? That's you know, a big warning sign for some people. They say that actually maybe that would suggest that his condition is, is really, really bad. We're also wondering, you know, um, how his health has been in the last 24 hours and how much he's managed to kind of pass over this huge uh, responsibility for dealing with the crisis to the minister that he's nominated to take over instead, Dominic mm -hmm. Robb, the foreign secretary. Um, Dominic Robb, I think, said that he last spoke to the prime minister on Saturday before and so there are lots of questions over how much the government's really on top of the the huge escalating crisis and the lockdown that's so important to making sure that it goes away as quickly as it can and uh tell us aubrey just in terms of for the prime minister himself so it was 10 days ago right that he tested positive for coronavirus now what did we hear over the course of the past uh, nine or ten days and how that has really escalated or deteriorated for him from a health perspective of course. So it was announced, I think, 11 days ago that he had tested positive for COVID-19. And at the same time, they said that he was going to self-isolation, that he was going to have to have his meals left outside his door. But there, Downing Street did insist that he would carry on taking charge of the country's response to coronavirus by chairing the meetings remotely, which, to be fair, the government had been doing in the run-up to that time. There'd been the sort of cabinet meetings held over zoom and so i think most ministers were familiar with this kind of video link we got a few more updates from him they were kind of these self-shot videos from his own isolation mm -hmm. unit if you like above number 11 downing street where he was supposed to be staying for seven days um also at the same time we had our health secretary test positive for covid19 now it has to be said the health secretary was out of isolation and was doing the media round yesterday. He was on our show as well. And he was not particularly positive about the Prime Minister's condition at the time. Hmm. He said to us, he's OK when asked about the Prime Minister's condition, and then said that for some, COVID-19 was very, very serious before clarifying that the PM is not at that end of the spectrum. So it has to be said that questions were being asked then about, were we about to see the Prime Minister kind of you know, get, his condition get a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, we know that he is in the intensive care unit. Do we know whether or not uh, he is breathing on his own or is he on a ventilator? Downing Street are keeping those details very, very quiet for now. I think they've said that, you know, the PM's condition is stable. They deliberately sort of dropped the uh, the word that they were saying, which they, they call his, his illness mild, mm -hmm. the symptoms that he was having. They dropped using that language uh, as soon as he went into hospital last night. So we know that things have escalated a little bit. But that at the moment, they're not giving us the clarity on whether he's on that ventilator or not. And obviously, that will be a big, big step. And people will really start to worry a lot more about the health of the prime minister. It has to be said that politicians here from all the political parties are hoping that he gets better soon. They've been all sending their messages of support. So it's probably just a case of wait and see at the moment. And what about his pregnant fiance? Yeah, his, uh, his fiance, Carrie Simmons, she's pregnant. They announced that they were getting engaged and that she was going to have their first child just a few weeks ago. She tweeted again from isolation. She said that she was on the mend from the symptoms that she'd been experiencing. So there's no reason to suggest that there's any kind of complications there, but obviously it's going to be an incredibly hard time for her to be dealing with while her, her fiancé, the Prime Minister, is off in hospital. And, and tell us a little bit, Aubrey, just in, in terms of how Britain has been particularly hard hit from this coronavirus. Yes, I think there were some, there were some hopes at the start that the strategy of kind of being able to contain the spreads before they... Uh, they escalated so much 
and that hasn't been borne out. The, the death rate here has been very high. It's been on the same track as Italy, which is obviously the, mo the worst affected country in Europe in terms of deaths. It's, uh, it's doing the same kind of trajectory as Spain and France. People were really hoping that the UK would, would be an outlier, but unfortunately it hasn't been. Now, lockdown measures were brought in here about two weeks ago. Um, it's believed that they might be considering even making them tougher now because we've had some, some nice weather here over the weekend. And while most people obviously adhered to the lockdown advice, there were a couple of scenes of people uh, out and about having a barbecue mm -hmm. on the beach. I think, for example, and a police person, uh, you know, used their helmet to scoop out some water from the ocean and poured it over the barbecue and told them to go home. So there are elements of people not obeying the rules and the health secretary indicated that he might be looking at tightening them even further to say that outdoor exercise, which is one of the sort of avenues that people might use to go outside and then stop for a chat or meet up with their friends, mm -hmm. might also be banned as well. And it's interesting uh, that uh, that Boris Johnson is in this fight uh, right now for his own health because um, there were there were questions around what Britain should do and what the government would be encouraging. Just a couple of weeks ago, when it came to the schools and businesses and pubs and 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 beaches and the like, right? Yes, there was a lot of resistance within the government about being seen to move much further than they needed to do to clamp down and you know, kind of dictate this kind of lockdown, which, let's be honest, is completely um, unprecedented in a sort of peacetime situation. You know, there was a lot of scepticism about taking Britain so far. And it's been borne out that actually that is, it seems, the most effective way of, of dealing with it. I mean, we still haven't actually seen that sort of, you know, the, the, the curve balancing out yet. We're still basically seeing the results of deaths of symptoms and the virus that will have been picked up sort of two weeks ago. So we are still very much on an upward tra trajectory in terms of the, the death toll, unfortunately. And then the Queen's message, you know, so calming, so reassuring yesterday, and that just, you know, hours after uh, the Queen gives her message, all of a sudden the, the Prime Minister is admitted to hospital. How, how are people in Britain feeling today? Yes, I, I'm sure that the timing of that message was very, very deliberate going out on a sort of Sunday evening after, like I said, a weekend of pretty good weather across the UK, encouraging people to basically stay inside. Unfortunately, the news tonight is going to be a big shock to people, you know, around the world. It's going to be the, the first sort of leader of a country that is literally in hospital, has coronavirus, and, you know, people will be speculating about pff, how, how well he's really feeling. So I think the country will be... I, th I think they'll be unifying around him. Like I said, lots of the politicians from different parties are all kind of coming together and saying, politics aside, we obviously just really hope that he improves and makes a really swift recovery. I think the country will think that as well. You know, it's a, it's a horrible virus and they'll be, they'll be wanting to sort of rally around him. Um, it will be interesting to see, you know, if he does sort of get much better, how much this kind of like boosts his sort of popularity, whether people really sort of... Um, sympathize with him or, or you know he goes through that kind of like war-like figure and people really rally around him but we're still sort of a few weeks away from that mm -hmm. all right aubrey appreciate you taking the time thank you that is sky news reporter aubrey allegretti